the Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back, Jeff Frick here on theCUBE, day three of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage from EMC World 2014. As you know, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we get the greatest, smartest people in the room, we invite them on theCUBE, ask them the questions you'd like to ask them, share the knowledge. We're always excited to come back to EMC World, that's where we started theCUBE five years ago. We've really grown since then. In fact, we're breaking new ground. This week at, at EMC World, we have actually two cubes going on concurrently, so we can get double the guests, double the fun, double the insight for you. And I'm really happy about our next segment here. We're joined by Cheryl Chamberlain, Hi. a longtime Cube alumni, women in tech alumni. Yeah. Uh, got a brand new job, used to be uh, EMC, now you got a new job at CSC managing what? Wait, the wait, Federation. Wait, wait, is that what on. it is? No, I work for Cap Gemini. What well, are you Cap trying Gemini, to do? Cap I'm babe? sorry, not CSC, <laughs> Cap Gemini. But at one Based in Paris, in the well, you look, go. I managed CSC at one time for EMC, so that's understandable. I also managed IBM Global Services. And I was going to put your title on the lower third, <laughs> but you had the entire federation listed out, and it took up too many characters. Yeah, so we, we had to fix that. Go with the federation. So yeah. welcome back to the queue. Thank you. How have you been doing? Oh, it's amazing. April 25th, I worked at EMC. Two days later, I joined Capgemini. I'm eight days in, and I feel like it's. I've been there forever. Just in time to come to EMC World. You you know how I plan <laughs> these things. <laughs> so now you're on, you've kind of moved from the, the technology side into the services side. I don't know, can I ask you any questions about that? Oh, I mean, absolutely. you've only been there for a couple of days. Well, they're dog days, right? Dog years, so it's <laughs> like I've been there for months. But really, it's the partnership side. The technology is certainly part of it, but go to market. I have a billion euro number. So, you know, let's figure out how we work together to meet those numbers but also focusing very much on their high growth initiatives, looking at Brazil, how can we build the business there, taking a few trips to Paris to make sure that I'm integrated with home office. So it's all good. You're busy. We're going to have to make this a pretty short interview because you, uh -huh. got, you got a billion, uh, billion euros to go uh, get done. Well, you've got part of the number, don't you? you that's what you told me. We'll Come to on, the cube. Yeah. on the cube. We'll work on it. Excellent. So you've been coming to EMC World for a long, long time. What do you think of the show this year? What's different? What's exciting? Great question. Well, I was at EMC for 14 years, and I went all of those 14 years, so I've seen the changes. You really saw the changes initially when Jeremy Burton came on aboard and saw a lot more flash and excitement. But when you see this year and they kick it off with the guitar and playing, that's right. and you know, that's really that's really where you take Jonathan it. Jonathan Martin really knows he's what he's gonna doing. He's going to be on uh, shortly uh, on the Cube. I don't know if he's bringing the guitar this time or not, but we we'll look forward to getting him on. So yeah, that's that's very exciting. There. The show keeps growing. We had the water people on. There's a lot of community service stuff going That's on. Right. And we had you on, um, I think it was actually at VMworld, uh, really talking about women in tech. And I think you, you kind of helped us kind of spearhead our kind of focus on really highlighting the women in tech that we've had on theCUBE. And in fact, you're on the list, of course. Of course, absolutely. Um, you can see all, all the women in tech that we have on theCUBE. If you go to siliconangle.tv under the playlist, you'll see the women in tech. And I think we're up to 110 or around that number. We've, 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 we went over 100. Uh, Padmashir Warrior from Cisco was number 100. We, we added her to the list uh, from the Red Hat Summit um, a few weeks ago. So, We've got a ton of support. It's a it's a very exciting area, and, and I've noticed that most of the conferences that we go to now have some type of of women in tech track, whether that be a lunch, a separate breakout session. So talk a little bit about it. I know you're passionate about the subject and how that's really being embraced by some of these larger companies. That's a great topic. When I was at EMC, I ran and founded their West Coast Women's Leadership Forum and really created it around the idea that it's not about work-life balance, it's about how women are leading and innovating. How are they changing the world? How are they influential? What are they doing that's different and how did they get there? So maybe three years ago, I hijacked Women of World at EMC World and changed the types of people that we had as speakers. This year, we brought in three panelists that are phenomenal. Um, former tre US Treasurer, 
of the United States. I think she's coming on. She's definitely coming she's definitely on. I had scheduled. breakfast with her. Right, right. Um, but really, the point of view is that she'll be talking to someone that Molly Fletcher, who is really known as the someone in the sports industry, so different points of view, and then a young up-and-comer that's a CEO in the biotech industry. So what have these women done? How are they different? And how can they teach the audience about their leadership style and what they can learn from them? So it's, it's very exciting. But really, we don't do it with women alone. We do it with our men, male friends. And oh, that's, that's why I like what oh, the that's kids good. doing. <laughs> Well, and, and our women in tech, you know, we've got a really wide variety of right. roles, ages, size of companies, uh, from from the, the 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 one gal uh, entrepreneur from the Tableau show who's helping people implement the Tableau solutions, all the way up to um, big like Pat Mashir from Cisco and right. uh, Beth Comstock from GE. You know, some really high power. Women. So it's it's exciting. I, yeah, work work life balance. Who has work life balance anymore? We all no. work way too much. Men but and women, right? Men Nobody. And everybody. Knows. Yeah. There's no such thing as work life balance. Hopefully, you work at something that you enjoy, so you right. don't mind putting in the time. So. Are you continuing this kind of effort in, in uh, the new role at Capgemini? Yes, absolutely. Well, that's my passion. You know, my day job, I drive the number, execute, bring differentiation to companies, and, and really make sure that they're success. But I'll always be very much engaged in women in leadership. And at the new company, there's a strong group that way that are leading that. Um, but I'll always connect it back to the outside world, because I think of women's leadership inside a company as what are we doing in the community community programs, but across companies, because that's how we learn from each other. It's, right. it's pretty powerful. And we like to have fun with, with stuff at theCUBE, as you know, you know we had a great <laughs> uh, uh, CUBE Madness promotion that we did in conjunction with March Madness back in March, pulling 32 of some of our favorite interviews and putting them in a head-to-head -head matchup that we worked to the champion. And, and now we're doing for Mother's Day, actually, not that all the women in tech are mothers, but they all certainly have mothers yes. uh, that supported them both in their tech careers as well as their leadership paths. Uh, we're releasing 10 of the 100 uh, women at a time with a short little bio, really continuing to highlight what we think are some pretty special people. That's great, so I'm going to be in those 10, right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Good. I think Checking. we released the first 10. Uh, we got a very busy crew. Greg's over there working the board. He's been <laughs> he's been working on that process, so he's getting them out uh, just as quickly as time allows. So so what's next? You got a, a new job, new opportunities. What are you really excited about as we uh, launch into the second half of 2014? Yeah, I'm excited about what Capgemini is doing around the area of so social, um, media, data analytics, cloud. I'm really excited about how they're going to help customers make new decisions by understanding what data they have in their environment. And then helping them drive that in a way that really businesses can make decisions more quickly based on data analytics. So that I'm very excited about. My background is business. I started out in accounting. I was a CFO. I don't think you know all no, of No, I didn't this. know that. Yeah, but I have to go back so far in time. I usually don't tell people, <laughs> but the first part of my career, I worked for the brands. And um, now I get to take all of that business background, put it together with the technology part and my belief in leadership and innovation and take that forward. So I love the new job and staying connected to my friends and Absolutely. colleagues and helping us be successful. So let me ask you a question about social. I, you know, we do a lot of these conferences and social is really, not so much for the social data collection from the customer side, but the, but the generation of social content from within a company. Right. You know, it's really easy to do if you're a relatively small company, people are very uh, invested in the company, they're passionate about it, they're founders, they're early employees, and you know, they, they've already committed because usually they're not getting paid much money and, and, and they're super passionate about their company and they, and they use social a lot. A lot right. of times they're younger. In a bigger company, if there's tens if not hundreds of thousands of employees, uh, lots and lots of layers, lots of divisions, it's kind of a distributed organization, um, certainly there's a lot of people that are passionate about the company, but for, you know, for a lot of people, let's face it, it's probably a job. How does a big company really try to drive kind of the outbound social activity within their employee base. And it's funny too, because part of our prep when we do a show is we'll go in and we pull up people's LinkedIn's, we pull up people's Twitters, and you know, see how many followers they have. And it's a, it's a really interesting disparity when you go to a big company. Some of the big execs don't even have a Twitter handle, which I kind of get, but then some do, but they, you know, their number of followers, number of tweets are not that, not that high, and then there'll be a couple of outliers, right, that are really active. How, how does, 
How does someone, how does a big company tap into that potential social motor uh, within their employees to get them you know, working on the outbound side? Well, that's a, it's a good question. You don't have to have a lot of followers to be impactful from a social perspective. It's who your followers are and if they're thought leaders with you. So maybe that conversation that they're having is the one they need to have. They don't need to have all the people really paying attention to them. But also you want a couple of people that are on a team that can teach others how to start getting involved in social. And I think that's part of it. I mean, the company wants, any company wants everyone to be engaged. Capgemini has 130,000 employees. That's a lot of people. 50,000 in India. I, not everybody is doing that. But for my team, I sit down with them and say, start with a photograph. Take a photograph, tweet about it, do a selfie with yep. a friend. Yep. And that's how you start getting engaged, and you see that people are paying attention to what you're saying. You, we have to do it. Yeah. It's really important. Now, the, the other piece of the equation is, is a lot of times, you know, senior folks are media trained, senior folks are confident in what they can say, what they can't say, and even if they say the wrong thing, uh, they're not necessarily going to get, you know, whacked in the back of the head. But more junior people, uh, either A, are not necessarily media trained, or two, maybe a little afraid of what to say. And, and you know, traditionally, the clamps have been down on a lot of big companies as to what could be communicated. You got to go through channels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, that broke down a little bit, I think, with blogs and companies yes. embracing blogs and letting people express themselves. I know you, you can sometimes get around the uh, the branding police a little bit sure. with the blogs, the right? You don't have blog, to say, yeah, right? personal blogs. Yes. So, how, you know, are, are companies enabling people to? And I guess the company really has to be a little bit of a risk taker to enable someone to send out a tweet without necessarily running it up the flagpole every time they feel inspired to send a great picture of themselves with a. Now, how, are, how are people policing that? How are they kind of working both sides of that coin? Well, you know, at EMC, I know what they do. There's a lot of social media training. At Capgemini, it's a very entrepreneurial company. Innovation is all around you. So I don't think they police it. I think there's trust in the employees that they're learning how to be social themselves and then just kind of guiding them along the way. You can't believe something like that. This is a new world. The right. world is, we're in front of each other. And, 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 and are they getting it? Are, the, are the, 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 the senior people in the marketing group that have always been the, uh, you know, kind of the brand, the brand police, if you will, are, are they kind of getting that they have to enable this? And, and, and two, you know, it's coming up from the new employees, right? Sure. The, the kids that live in this world which, which we heard the other day, you know, the, the initial uh, digital generation kids are already 28 years old, right? So now there's, right. A, there's a whole other crop it's behind them. Yeah. Are they getting it and are, and are they embracing, you know, to leverage this new energy and kind of new communication vehicle? Absolutely. I know that when I joined, the, 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 the marketing team's like, we love you, you're social, you're on LinkedIn, can you just change it to Capgemini <laughs> instead of EMC for us? But I really think they are, and they're also tracking it and managing and looking and seeing what the impact is, how it's affecting their brand. So I, I think we're, we're on the right course. All right, good. So it's, uh, it's 2014, you've been coming to these things for a few years since you got out of the accounting business, which is probably a smart <laughs> decision. Yes. What, what's going to happen in the next 12 months? What are we going to be talking about next year when we get you on? We're going to talk about the results, how I Did got you make my your number. billion, right? Good. Where are we going to build the business going forward? and how are we going to work more closely with EMC, VMware, VCE, Pivotal, and differentiate the market. Awesome. Lots to talk about, and how am I going to continue to lead in this new world of innovation with women leaders? Excellent. And you and your family. <laughs> Me and my family, right. You got to meet my family at right. uh, Big Data SV, I think, at the Q Party Big Data your SV. Your boss. My boss, your exactly. Boss. We'll have uh, Big Data New York City 2014 again this year, okay. our second year of running that, we're doing a few more of our own events, small events, nothing, nothing That's quite like right. EMC yeah. World, which is giant. But uh, Cheryl, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank Always you, great to see you. Uh, I'm Jeff Frick, we're at EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next segment after this short break.